I'm going to call this meeting of the City of Salem Budget Committee. Will the recorder please take the roll? Mayor Peterson? Here. Member Bennett? Here. Member Anderson? Present. Member Nanke? Here. Member McCoy? Here. Member Dickey? Here. Member Benjamin? Here. Member Benares? Here. Member Lewis? Here. Member Berger? Here. Member Kylo White? Absent. Member Bailey? Absent. Member Moore Green? Here. Member Wildfang? Absent. Member Gonzalez? Here. Member Hazlitt? Here. Member Clark? Here. Member Pruitt? Absent. Thank you. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to our final budget committee for this round, our budget committee meeting. Um, and I thank you all for being here tonight. Um, we've had some really good discussion and some long meetings, so I appreciate you sticking with it. And um, hopefully we will get through our material tonight in a shorter time than 10 o'clock, as some of our meetings have been. Okay, so. First of all, I need a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the May 6th meeting. So moved. Member Lewis, did you have a question? Yeah, I, have, I, I got think it. I have one correction on the page four of the mo uh, minutes under 11 goal setting. Um, towards the bottom of the page, uh, the motion was to move that the removal of the $60,000 for art pedestals um, and it was, the action was uh, vote, uh, I was three and nay was 12, but uh, it says motion passed. I think that should say motion failed. What, what is he saying? Oh yes, that's and correct. So with that change, I would second the motion. Okay, and does the maker of the motion concur? Concur. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, I apologize, but I don't understand the motion because I was trying to read where you were on here. Would you restate what you were saying, Councillor yeah, Lewis? Page four. Yes. Towards the bottom, the last, um, second to the last motion. Mm -hmm. uh, the action was, uh, uh, says motion passes, but it should say motion failed. There were three ayes and 12 nays. So it should say motion failed. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right. Okay, so again, all of those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Okay, um, at this time we'll have um, Kelly Jacobs come and go through our handout material. Thank and there's you. a lot of it. <laughs> that is correct. And I will do it with an economy of time. Um, so we'll start with your handout material. And then what I asked Chair Dickey to be able to do this evening was to also go through just very briefly the staff reports that are associated with various agenda items this evening. I'm hoping what that will do is allow you to have your, your discussion without me popping up and down to introduce the next thing so that you'll be able to flow through the agenda more easily. So the first item of handout materials is the status report. And it recounts the um, uh, activities of the Budget Committee through May 6th. And I want to bring a few things to your attention. So that's item 4A on your agenda. And attachment one represents the, um, the result of errata sheet four. So that is the only errata sheet that we've had during this process that had an actual budget impact. And then on attachment two, the projects and programs placed on the wish list. There's a couple, there are a couple of changes that I'd like you to be aware of. Um, the ongoing costs for the automated external defibrillators has been added, and it's a low cost for, uh, for ongoing maintenance of that equipment. And then also um, representing action from the May 6th meeting, the 
$20,000 for extending um, library open hours for the 16 Sundays during the summer it has been added to the wish list. Attachment three provides uh, five items of information that were requested by the budget committee at the May 6th meeting and all of those items are included with your packet this evening. And then the final attachment of the status report um, provides uh, the co correspondence that was reviewed at the May 6th meeting. Moving on to item 4B, which is one of those items that was requested, uh, information items that, was requ that were requested, the Urban Renewal Agency budget information request, and though there are two items here that fulfill the request. Um, a financial report that actually provides the impact of the urban renewal areas on other taxing districts, and this is a report for fiscal year ending 2013-14. Um, and then the second attachment to the staff report is the Salem Convention Center fiscal year 15-16 planned capital outlay expenditures. Moving on to item 4, 4C is fulfilling a request for a cost estimate for a strategic communications plan. And I think this item will receive further discussion during the wish list discussion. Moving on to item 4D. The average mileage of police vehicles that have been identified for replacement. This is information pro provided by our Fleet Services Division. And it just simply provides the some information about average um, mileage before a police vehicle is retired. Mm -hmm. Item 4E on your handout materials is the wish list staff report. And this provides um, the wish list items and a strategy for funding those items. And rather than going into depth at this point, I think this will probably be part of your discussion later this evening. And I just want to point out one thing that an action or a, a motion that was passed in the, during the <coughs> meeting last week called for an errata to move appropriation authority in the emergency services fund. And rather than bringing um, an errata back to you, that movement of appropriation authority is handled in this recommendation for the <coughs> automated external defibrillators. So it's just in lieu of an errata. <coughs> Item 4F in your packet is correspondence regarding um, parks planning. And I believe that all members received this via I think we forwarded this via email, and I know we forwarded to you the response from uh, the park superintendent, yep. and it is included in your packet here so that it can be included as part of the meeting record. And then additionally, in your that, that item is on the additions agenda. Also on the additions agenda is the handout um, item 4H, which is correspondence from Travel Salem in response to uh, discussion at a previous meeting. So now what I would like to do, if I could please, is move on to the items in your packet that are tied to particular agenda items and just explain them very briefly. Agenda item number seven is approval of the ad valorem property taxes for the city of Salem. This is a very standard staff report that we provide to the budget committee at this point in the process every year. And it is one of the primary duties of the budget committee to approve the city's property tax levies. This is presented in, there are two items here, to approve the city's permanent tax rate of 5.8315 per thousand, so $5.83 per thousand. And then the second is to approve the general obligation bond debt levy of 11,447,500. So as I said, this is one of the, the primary functions of the budget committee is to approve the property tax levies for the city of Salem. Item eight which is the recommendation of the City of Salem budget. This staff report on the second page provides a numeric table representing the City of Salem budget. And this table is the budget as it was proposed to the committee on April 15th. And it also includes the changes related to errata sheet four. What it does not include is anything to do with a decision of the committee regarding the wish list. And so at the point in the meeting when a motion is made to approve the city budget, uh, the motion will need to include anything that was added or anything that was approved on the wish list to be included in the budget. Item nine on the agenda is the approval of the ad valorem property taxes for the Salem Urban Renewal Agency. Once again, primary responsibility of the bu budget committee to approve these levies. And then item 10 is approving the Salem Urban Renewal Agency budget and that budget has not, has been unchanged from the point at which it was recommended to the committee. 
Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, we will move on to item number five. That's on page two of your agenda, goal setting and policy discussion. So this is our opportunity to talk about anything, um, to talk about the wish list, talk about wish list items, anything you want to add or remove from the wish list could happen at this point. Member Anderson. Thank you, Chair Dickey. Um, I saw the response from the S Travel Salem organization, uh, which was actually very helpful from what we had discussed at the last meeting. But then I'm, I'm a little unclear as from what the staff response was. Is that $36,000, is it coming from the general fund even though Travel Salem says we didn't want it to come from the general fund? No, we would propose it to come from the TOT fund. Okay, and so is that an actual addition to the TOT fund or is there just an allocation of monies that haven't been spent from the TOT fund? So, um, well, it could be both, uh, <laughs> <laughs> depending on what you choose to do. Um, so at this point, it, it's not included within the recommended budget. Were you okay. to add it, uh, then we could take funds from the fund balance, which is what I would recommend, okay. uh, and move that for the expenditure. And that would be some sort of reserve? The, Correct. the funds we would take would be from the reserves in Correct. the TOT fund. Yes. Um, may I continue? Yes. Unless we want to discuss that and maybe other budget committee members want to discuss that specific uh, item from Travel Salem, I'm happy to have that happen and I come back to a different item. I have a point of clarification. Is, that, is this different than what's been put on the wish list? The $36,000 no, on the wish no, list? For no, the, okay. I understand that now. It's just uh, I didn't know where it was coming because if you read what Travel Salem says, you know, they've given us some good information but also some information that I needed to confirm so I from. Think, uh, some of the concern was that we had heard that the suggestion was that it come from the city manager's fund. Yeah, and, yeah, and so yeah. um, there was some misunderstanding about whether or not that meant the general fund city manager's budget or the uh, city manager special events allocation within the TOT fund. Okay, and um, it's the latter. Correct, it is okay. the latter. Okay. So I am um, going to make a motion at this time that I move that we add to the wish list $75,000 to hire a consultant to create a strategic communications plan for the city. Second. And I'll just address my emotion for a moment. Um, I, I was quite surprised to learn last week that we actually didn't have a strategic communications plan. This is something that the city desperately needs. I know $75,000 sounds like a lot of money, but, um, and it's hard. I, I was telling some people before the meeting tonight, I think this is the kind of investment that the return on it, we will see um, more than what we put the $75,000 we put into it. It's hard to quantify that we don't because we're, we're trying to budget for a fiscal year, but this is something that um, will reap great rewards many, many years over. I mean, we, you know, we've had so many, we've got so many big things going on. We've had some big things going on for the last couple of years, and it's been a challenge for us to get our communication out to the public in a way that's digestible to them, in a way that they know what's going on that helps them be able to engage with us better. I think this is something that um, we need to be looking at. It's been a long time coming. I know the council's been talking about needing to do this for a while, and so I think this is our opportunity to start that ball rolling and to make this happen. I say I, one quote that um, I really like, I think it's George Bernard Shaw who says, you know, the, the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has happened. And I think that we have done that um, at least, you know, maybe not intentionally, but it's like, well, we went to the neighborhood association. Well, it's more than just going to a neighborhood association. It's how do we get, you know, how, how are we transparent? How do we get everything out to the public and allow the public to engage with us? And the um, staff report does a great job of kind of outlining what a commu strategic communications plan does. So thank you to staff for putting that together. Any, uh, Member Nanke. Thank you, Madam Chair. The other items that are sitting on the wish list tonight have offsettings. Right. Uh, so I'd be curious as to what the offset may be for that if we talk to the staff at all. 
so um, I, what I neglected to say, and then I'll let um, City Manager Duncan explain, uh, my intention for the $75,000 is that it would come out of the ending fund balance. And um, so you may have seen uh, in the, the paper today an article relating to parking fines. Uh, that's something that wasn't included in the budget. We hadn't taken it to the uh, city council uh, for their consideration. It's only gone to first reading at this point. It hasn't gone to second reading or been adopted. But there is potential there for an additional roughly $100,000 in revenue that would come to the general fund. Uh, so in this case, I would be comfortable with using unending fund balance, knowing that there's a revenue source to offset uh, that one-time cost for the communications plan. Uh, Member Moore Green. Um, your comment that it would be a one-time, um, that, that becomes difficult because I think any of us who have used uh, um, these tools know that you know, it's 18, 24 months, three years before you've really got something solid in place that is moving forward. So um, how, how would you address that in future years? Is this something that we would come back and look at each year? So uh, as far as a one time, I mean the cost of the analysis and to produce the plan, um, depending on what the plan actually states and uh, the recommendations that come out of it, we may, may have to make some changes to uh, our staffing. Um, and then that would be a, a discussion at the, the next budget committee hearing um, next year and uh, some recommendations could likely come out of that. That's correct. Okay. Member Benjamin. <coughs> I too was surprised that we didn't have a communication plan and that's going to be really important uh, going forward. Some of my thoughts about the how do we get uh, maybe hire consultants or something like that is a little too easy and a little expensive and I'd like to see if there was a way that we could put a, uh, uh, an award of $10,000 and have people submit volunteer groups, high schools or whatever, a communications plan and whatever so city council can read it over along with staff and if it's workable we award a ten thousand uh, dollar grant if you will it could be a high school for and they can use it for their football uniforms or something like that or it could be a private citizen that came up with that does this for a living and says hey there's a quick ten thousand dollars i'm going to go ahead and submit this if it makes sense to us we can move forward with it just throwing that out there as an option there any other discussion? Okay, I will call for the question. Oh, yes, Member Benars, then Member Lewis. I just wanted to make sure I had a conversation with you outside of the earshot of everybody else before the meeting this evening about this issue, and I just wanted to make sure a few things were, this $75,000 is not not um, the funds to be used for, as an example, the neighborhood associations, the communication funds that we've cut within the neighborhood associations. The plan of this would be to have a professional company come in and put together a program so that we know that we're on the right path of communicating with our constituents, uh, be, it, be it from staff out or us out, but the idea that there is communications happening and, and at a professional level. And it's so it's, it's a consultant work, basically, not, not paper and mailings and that kind of thing. I just want to make that clear. Member Lewis. Yeah, I, I think we're getting close to voting on this wish list item, so I'm going to speak to the motion. Uh, I'm going to vote in favor of it, and I don't do that lightly. It's an additional $75,000, and even though we're now talking about maybe getting additional money for parking fees, I, for one, who have gotten a number of $15 parking fees, am not going to get a $25 parking fee, so you're not getting any more money from me. But when it comes to the communication plan, at some point, some responsibility has to be put on the shoulders of each and every citizen. Some responsibility. And I don't think we ever talk about that. I'm talking about it now. So it's a, in my opinion, it's another $75,000 that this city is going to spend on talking about communicating with its citizens. It already spends money on communicating with its citizens. I think it does a very good job. 
as somebody who moved to the city 15 years ago, it was very easy to find out what was going on here. Very easy, if you wanted to. I did, and I found out. If you don't want to know, you're not going to know. So I'm going to vote for it, but it's, it's another $75,000 in my mind. Okay, all of those in favor of the motion to add $75,000 to the wish list to come from the ending fund balance to um, hire a consultant to create a strategic communications plan for the city signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Okay, hey, hey. will the nays raise your hand? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, so are there any, is any more discussion regarding the wish list items? Yes, Member Benjamin. Uh, talking with graffiti abatement and understanding a little bit more about where they're at in regards to workload, caseload, and whatnot, um, I think I can withdraw the. Uh, seasonal graffiti abatement person at this time. So I'll take it off the wish list. Do I have to make a motion or something? I think you have to make do, do we need a motion for that? Go ahead and make, yeah, go ahead and make a motion. Uh, I move that we remove the graffiti abatement seasonal person from the wish list. Second. Okay. And now we have discussion. Yes, perfect. perfect, yes. Is there any discussion? <laughs> okay, just a little bit. Uh, after talking with graffiti abatement and a few other sources, uh, understanding that a lot of the backlog that was happening was because of the uh, waiver mm -hmm. systems. Uh, that's actually been uh, pushed forward and actively massaged to the point where a lot of the larger entities have signed the waivers and so they're actively and quickly taking care of what's been out there on the caseload. So I'm not really at this time thinking that we need an additional seasonal graffiti abatement person, so. Any other discussion? Yes, Member Hazlitt. Only one concern with that. School was soon to let out. Yeah. And when school lets out, then normally then you have graffiti goes way up mm -hmm. and I just worry about not having enough people to do it all over the city member Benjamin and I thought the same way when I asked the question well I'd like to see this happen before summer and school lets out thinking that would be the time when the devil's workshop is open <laughs> if you will and um, from what I understand it, that it's not really necessarily the summer where it, it, it happens a lot more. It, it's sporadic. It could be in the middle of the winter. But whatever additional graffiti does come up, typically that would be on private property and neighbors take care of that themselves anyway, is what I was told. So just throw that out there. Member Nanke. Um. I would move to amend that motion um, in that the $13,500 that would have been slated for that goes towards the strategic communication plan. Is there a second? No, and basically. It amends, don't we just have to agree to it? Remember Bennett. Time out. Sorry. Yeah. We're spending money we're not spending. <laughs> <laughs> I think we work. can't do that. We, we, have, we haven't, we're not spending, we're not only not spending it, we're really not spending it under this motion. Because this hasn't passed. I can see if we had agreed to spend it, it was built into the budget, and somehow this would add money back to the budget. This just, this is an event that hasn't happened. Right. And, and now, Councilor Benjamin saying, I, I don't, I definitely don't want it to happen. Does that make sense? Member Nanke. Madam Chair. Yes, but in our uh, wish list staff report, it identified funding sources to fund all of those items. Mm -hmm. And so that funding would still be sitting out there without an allocated direction to go to. And since we added another item onto the wish list for $75,000, um, dealing with an or a 
essentially working capital. I would like to reduce the working capital distribution and supplement <laughs> it with those funds that were made available to pay for that position if we in fact approve the entire wish list. It, that's where it's going. By not spending it, it goes back into the working capital, right? No, it would either go back to IT special projects or IT um, consulting or there was three or four different areas where um, general fund non-departmental for mm -hmm. 10, IT special projects for 15, and then the 110 from uh, liability insurance, which added up to those items that were previously listed on the wish list. And then we added 75,000 for strategic communication to go against unappropriated ending balance, which I always really hate. So to minimize the taking from your beginning, if we're removing an item from the wish list, I would like to move its funding away to somewhere else. Member rather Bennett. Than have it just sitting there. Member Bennett. We haven't taken any money from anybody on this item. Nobody, no money's been taken from IT for the graffiti item. Because we're not doing the graffiti item. We might not. But we've identified. It's just identified. Funding. Where would it come from if Councillor uh, Benjamin had decided to proceed with his his motion to remove to to go ahead? He decided not to. The money's released. Okay, we can let that one move, you and then we can get into the wish list, ID and then we'll pick where the money actually goes to as well, part of the full general. Well, what you're trying to do is take money away from IT and put it into the ending fund balance. That's what your motion amounts to. I mean, I, that's the logic I'm following. If that's where you think the money came from, you would just reduce her budget for an ending fund balance. I, I just, I, I can't comprehend it at this point. So um, what- Maybe you can whiteboard it for yeah. me because uh, I'm lost. <laughs> no, I, I think what might be helpful um, is, is to go through the entire wish list items and then once the total's been yes. identified to then look at the funding sources, because okay. I can sort of see this you're taking away and now you're adding back what you took away yeah, and it, it adds some complexity to the issue. So um, I will rescind my amendment from the floor at the present time. <laughs> Member McQuaid. Okay. Member Anderson. I call the question on Councillor uh, um, Benjamin's motion. Then we can get that off the table. Okay. All right. Call for the question. Um, Councillor Benjamin, would you please restate your motion? Who second? I move to remove the additional part-time seasonal uh, employee from the wish list for graffiti abatement. All right, and who seconded that motion? Okay. All right, all of those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Mm. No. Okay, more discussion. Okay. Uh, Mayor Peterson. Yes. I would like to um, discuss the issue that we were talking at length about last time, and that has to do with the f additional $36,000 funding from the Cultural and Tourism Fund for the Travel Salem web website reconstruction. And if you remember last time, uh, we had several questions actually about what this additional funds uh, would do. and. Quite frankly, uh, we were a little caught off guard and the person who came to represent the cultural and tourism, re the request to cultural and tourism fund, uh, I think really tried very hard to answer our questions but did not have the information to do that. And um, so this evening, Angie Morris is here representing Travel Salem and um, <coughs> really, certainly at my request and I think at a lot of our request was we would like to hear from her exactly what this um, computer need is and when I was able to visit with her and others from the Executive Committee of Travel Salem I better understood what they're trying to achieve and I would just like an opportunity for the rest of you to hear that and then we could consider uh, also that that request was never asked to be out of the general fund but was asked to come from the cultural and tourism fund. So if that 
is appropriate at this point, I'd like to ask that she'd be able to tell us about that. Okay? Well, thank you so much for coming down. And just to remind you, you have three minutes to speak. And after two minutes, the yellow light comes on. And three minutes, the red light comes on. OK, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, members of the Budget Committee, for this opportunity. Um, so I would like to clarify what the request is for. It's for website upgrades of TravelSalem.com. So the website is fully functional. It's doing great work in um, representing this community to the international visitor community. Um, but we need to stay competitive and would like to do some upgrades on the website. So that some of the things that we're looking at doing with that money would be to create a mobile-friendly website interface. Um, roughly 47% of transactions um, were people are actually booking travel as coming through the mobile device. So it's really important that, that we create a responsive website, which means that it it's responds to whatever device is, is looking at our website. So that would be one of the major upgrades. Um, we would be establishing a booking engine on the site so visitors can actually book their hotel room directly on the site. We would be partnering with TripAdvisor.com to elevate our destination awareness, which is very exciting. Uh, we would look at streamlining our navigation. We'd be sh shifting our emphasis from a more visual, or excuse me, <laughs> shifting our emphasis to a more visual, user-friendly experience. So we'd be using icons, images, and video, which is m the more the trend that's happening these days in our industry. We would be creating a sports marketing section of our website, which would highlight venues and regional resources for planners and event participants. We'd be rolling out a destination development program component that would feature wine country tours, cycling trails, and agritourism opportunities. We'd be looking at upgrading and redesigning the events section of our website, which currently receives 8,000 plus visitors every month. We would be expanding our interactive online map to include additional maps featuring tours, trails, and locally sourced foods, for example. So there are other things that maybe aren't quite as appealing as those, but it's a, a lot of upgrade. It will uh, make the website more competitive with, within our industry and provide the visitor with the tools they need to, to better book their travel here in Salem. Okay, thank you. Are there questions for Ms. Morris? Oh, Member Benars. Just a real quick one. So if you didn't have the $36,000 that com that's coming from the ending balance of the TOT fund, where would that $36,000, you'd have to do the revamp of the website regardless. So where would that money come from and what else would we lose out on within say, Travel Salem? Well, thank you, Councillor uh, Bednards. I think that we would have to take a closer look at the budget. Um, we would certainly work within the resources that the Council approves for Travel Salem for next fiscal year. Um, we would look at juggling and reallocating resources within the budget to accomplish as much as what I've discussed with you tonight. But we might have to phase that in over a couple of years. Um, we would have to pull money from other budget line items, and that would be a discussion with the Board of Directors as to prioritizing that. So. Um, that was a great question. I hope I answered it. The other thing that we talked about at, at, when you weren't here that, that last meeting was making sure that Travel Salem has an ending fund balance that gets carried over from year to year so that you know that you've got something. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, but that was the other thing that you might consider when you go through your budgeting process, just to make sure there's something at the end, just in case contingency comes up. Yeah. Okay. You know, and Charles Sam, historically, um, and many members of the folks in this room here have served on our board, um, recognize the fact that we typically have a zero ending balance. We push all the money into service in that year. And when uh, Mayor Peterson was on our board, she was an advocate for having a contingency in the budget. So that's a discussion that she's also asked the, the board to have again, um, which we will be doing um, to discuss the approach for that. Um, and happy to do that. Well, it's interesting. As a budget committee, we often see uh, beginning fund balances and ending fund balances is the same thing. Um, and the reason that happens is we don't collect the money until half of the fiscal year is over. We need that those funds to be used during that period of time. Generally speaking, you're not going to end up with that same situation. Therefore, you don't really need to have as large, should have one, but not as large an ending fund balance. Yeah, we do sort of work a little bit in a similar way because we have membership revenues that we time to come in um, the last quarter of our fiscal year, which is April, May, and June, because we're kind of low on funds at that time. So we have our 
membership revenues for the next fiscal year coming in during that time so it can help float us until we get um, to the beginning of the fiscal year. So we do have to manage that very carefully. But, um, you know, one of the things the executive committee has discussed is, for instance, having a reserve so that we can have an audit done every three years of our books and things like that. So um, definitely proactive on that. And I think the mayor's um, suggestion will be considered at our next meeting for sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. That was really helpful. Very Appreciate helpful. that. Thank you. Okay. Is any more discussion on the wish list? Member Berger. A uh, question for staff. What is our contract with Travel Salem? How long is it an annual contract to work with them or is it longer than that? Uh, additionally, if these, if we don't go with Travel Salem is in the next year, is that website gone? Um, I'm just kind of, I don't understand or know quite the relationship. So I'd like some understanding on that. Yeah. I'm uh, looking for staff. I believe it's uh, an annual renewal contract. Um, uh, looks like Kelly. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, Angie's shaking her head. That's <laughs> not a. That's, yeah. <laughs> right. I saw Kelly trying to recall <laughs> where we were with that. So Travel Sound has a 15-year contract that's renewable upon every five years. And so we're in our, our current five-year second phase of that contract. <coughs> but we do annually renew our contract with the city's contract department um, as practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions, Mayor Peterson? So is this the appropriate time for me to make a motion regarding that item or, or are we for waiting the till list? the end? Uh -huh. Yes, and, and then, then we, will, we, the we will be making a motion eventually about the budget itself and what to include from the wish list on that. Oh, okay. So I, I believe that so would I be the wait. time okay. um, that you would include it when we make a motion for the budget. Is that, Got it. am I correct okay. on that? Sorry. Member Nanke. Thank you, Madam Chair. We need to figure out what the wish list is yeah. and what we want to do with it. And then when we, we uh, approve the final budget, because it doesn't have any of that in it, we would just make that as an amendment um, per se to include those items in the final budget that we voted on from the wish list that we desire to have in or not. So this would be the time that we would want to finalize our wish list, yes. and then the, right, then the motion at the time we adopt the budget is would include what the wish list, that? whatever is or is not included on there at that time. Yes, Mayor. Then I have a question. Then are we are we going to discuss item by item the three items that have been suggested? From the to be cut from the general fund so as to accommodate the wish list, or is that something that we wait until later? So it's on what, this. What I would suggest is taking up the uh, wish list items by fund. So, um, and then within each fund, you could discuss the funding source of that wish list item. And when oh, we get to okay. the general fund, once we've determined the items that they're looking to be funded. We can look at potential sources of revenue and then identify the amounts out of each category or area in order to total uh, what the wish list items are. I see. Okay. Thank you. So uh, would your recommendation be then just to go um, each wish list item and discuss that? Is that... Um, so my recommendation would be uh, by fund, being that we're looking at funding sources. Um, okay. So that, for example, the emergency services fund, that's the AEDs. Um, the cultural and tourism fund is a website we're talking about. And then we get to the general fund, which is the other items. Member Bennett. I'll be quiet. <laughs> What's that? Let's see if this works. I'm following this. I'll do the emergency f services fund one first, okay? Uh, I move, we, uh, I, now I thought, let me check with the city man. I thought you had given us a $30,000 figure. Did, did it go back up to 50 for the? I, I believe it was originally 75. Yeah. Now it's 50. And we came back with a 50 because we're recommending a like-for-like like match with right. the foundation. Okay, so, so it's 50. 
Well, and if I may please, we need $50,000 of appropriation for the AEDs in one place okay. because the donated funds will come into the fund from the, from the foundation and then we'll expend for all the AEDs out of that fund. Okay. But it won't be a total of 50000 directly coming out of the fund? That is correct. Right. Okay. I'll move then uh, uh, one-time uh, funding for automated external defibrillator devices uh, for city police department patrol cars at $50,000 with an ongoing uh, charge against the emergency services funds of $1,220 annually for pads and six I'm, do I do the 6290 for batteries every four years? We will do that through the budget we'll process in those years. Okay. Yeah. Maybe four years from now. Four years from now, we will. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that makes that a much more palatable motion, I'm sure. All right. Would you like to address your motion? Just making the motion. Yeah, I move a, a one-time uh, allocation from the Emergency Services Fund of $50,000 for automated, automated defibrillator, de defibrillator devices be placed in city patrol, uh, police patrol cars, and an ongoing allocation, or, and uh, $1,220 annually for PADS. Yes, and that was seconded by Member Benares. So would you, would you like to address or have any discussion about it? We've discussed this okay. before. Yes, Member Benares. It's a small item, but you don't need PADS the first year. I'm just watching the city manager. He nodded. So, so what I heard was a $50,000 allocation to come out of the unappropriated ending fund balance within the emergency services fund. Plus 1200 uh, Don't need the 1200 Next year. Yeah, we will. Yeah, Great. Do we have spare pads for each one as well right now? We don't have them yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Member Lewis. Uh, yeah. I think they could come up with 1200 out of their materials and services okay. if necessary. Member Lewis. This has been a great experience for uh, for me, the first budget committee. Anyway, this uh, this for me is something that belongs on a wish list and then belongs on a wish fulfillment list. Uh, excellent idea. I, I credit um, Councillor Bennett for the idea. Um, police cars can go where fire trucks can't, and they can get there a whole lot quicker. And people get out of the way of police cars, believe it or not, a whole lot quicker than they get out of the way of fire trucks or emergency vehicles. Um, a great idea, and I, I encourage its passage. Right. Member Berger. Uh, I don't have first aid certification and haven't since I was in high school, so I don't exactly know um, how to do CPR. Uh, but. Uh, I do have concern about asking our police officers who already have to deal with a lot of different things when they come into a situation, asking them to be responsible for one more. Um, I'm guessing that they're already uh, trained to do this and to use this equipment. Um, they just don't have it. Uh, but I guess I'd like to hear that from the chief, that that is the case, and I'm not asking them to do one more thing and adding one more thing to their already complicated uh, task list as they come onto a scene. That's the beauty of an AED. It's automatic. I, I will ask Chief Moore <laughs> to address that. Good evening, uh, Budget Committee members. Uh, Jerry Moore, Chief of Police. Um, uh, we are already trained in CPR and we've already had training on AEDs, so uh, I think this gives us a great tool to help uh, save lives and uh, when we respond to a, a situation uh, right now, it, we would give CPR, and if it was appropriate, we'd uh, use AED, and uh, I, I think we're capable of taking care of that, and quite frankly, I appreciate the fire chief uh, coming up with the idea to, to place it in our cars. Great, thank you very much. All right, any other discussion on this motion? <coughs> okay, all of those in favor of the motion um, to expend $50,000 from the Emergency Services Fund for AEDs for the police cars signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, Member McCoy. Uh, I would move that. Um, we take $36,000 from the unappropriate entity balance in the Cultural Tourism Fund uh, to be allocated to travel sale and provide for the website improvements that we just discussed and heard. Second. All right, would you like to address your motion? 
Um, I spoke to it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm uh, probably the self-designated tourism expert on this, <laughs> on this uh, council, given what I do for a living and have dealt with for 16 years. And I can tell you, um, you believe it or not, I have seen ongoing for the time I've worked for the Restaurant and Lodging Association, investments in these direct marketing organizations have a direct return on the investment. You can discuss how much that return is. There's a direct return for the investment. And in this day and age uh, of the internet and, and uh, all the technology that's going on, if you're not, if you're not um, competitive in what you're offering and you can't drive folks to these when they're looking for things and looking for products or looking for where they're going to go. Um, your website's just not effective and not efficient, and that's really what this money's going for. So I would urge a yes vote on this uh, uh, on this item. Member Anderson. Thank you. I think the report from uh, Ms. Morris was that 40 percent of the lodging arrangements are made by mobile, that means somebody's traveling down the freeway and they're saying, oh, here's Salem, let's see if I should stop here or should I go on to Eugene or someplace else, and the easier we can make it for them to say, Salem's got something up that's very easy, I'll, I'll you know, go to a, a hotel there or a motel there rather than to seek lodging further down the road. So I think it's an excellent idea. Member Benares, then Mayor Peterson. So uh, in, in, in addition to Member Anderson's comments, the issue, the, the clear issue is we can all get on the Internet, we can all figure out a place to stay at any community. What we're looking at doing now is saying, I just found Salem, I found that they do have a hotel, and I don't have to jump to another website or do it, take another step. I can go right here and sign up for that, that hotel right now, right from what I've got. I think it's a great way to catch them so you're not losing them all. It's another 10 miles down the road. Now they've passed Salem because they're fuddling around with trying to find a website. Needless to say, they shouldn't be driving and using te uh, texting anyway, but. <laughs> it's the passenger doing it. <laughs> Mayor Peterson. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I'm going to vote in favor of this motion, and uh, you may wonder why, since I was very uh, opposed to additional funding um, I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago we dealt with this um, because I've had a chance since then to th more thoroughly understand what the request was for and why the request um, is in addition to the funds that we've already um, allocated in the past to Travel Salem. I do think that it's an, it's an important addition to the way the website functions and I think it's important to go ahead and get that done um, as quickly as possible so that we can continue to be as competitive as we can against other cities that have even excelled us already in, in their marketing. Right, I have Member Berger, the Member Gonzalez, the Member Lewis. A uh, question to the city manager. Uh, could you talk to me a little bit about the process of Travel Salem's funding request? and the rationale for denying this in the first place, because my understanding was they requested this as part of their package. There was a process uh, where the staff recommendation was different from this. So I'm just wondering a little bit about what that process was and what the thought process was by staff. Sure. I, I can't speak to it fully um, because it was a thought process that didn't occur in this head. Um, <laughs> but I, I can tell you what I do know from discussions with the, the former city manager um, that it was based on a look at the, the totality of uh, the grants and the other um, expenditures within the TOT fund and wanting to maintain a, a certain fund balance. Um, there was also some thought as to uh, additional revenues that, that come to Travel Salem and, and whether or not that was a more appropriate use of uh, resources for this particular expenditure. Um, there was. Uh, a fairly significant increase uh, two years ago, excuse me, last year to the budget, and then another increase this year. So adding on another 36,000 uh, would be a pretty substantial increase if you looked at that two-year period. So as I understand the, the thought process, it was uh, as I've presented. Member mm -hmm. right. Gonzalez. You know, I think to the common person, $36 to upgrade a website, that sometimes doesn't make sense, even though we know that today and like I said, I agree with what everybody's comments here, but it'd be nice in the future to ask Travel Salem to come back and maybe report back on the success on some of the, you know, maybe what they use to measure success, rooms booked. It'd really be nice that way uh, the public can see that return on investment. Member Lewis. 
Actually, uh, maybe to piggyback on Member Gon Gonzalez's comment, I, I'm, I too feel as though the, the amount um, given to uh, Travel Salem has, has been an increase, substantial increase. But for me, and again, I'm, it's my first time through this, so I'm trying to look at it as simply as I can. Um, I'm looking at this as a, as a $36,000 investment out of a particular bucket and what I would want to see is that return on investment and have that, that bucket grow mm -hmm. uh, for the investment. And so if we can show that return, then, then that money uh, plus more gets paid back. Um, and so I'm willing to take a chance with that money rather than just have it sit in the bucket. Okay, I will call for the question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Okay. We got it. Great. Okay. Um, Member Bennett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I move uh, the Budget Committee uh, approve extending Sunday open hours in the central location of the Salem Public Library uh, to include the summer months which equals about 16 days of four hours each for $20,000 from the general fund. Second. Second. Right, moved by Member Bennett and seconded by Mayor Peterson. Uh, Member Bennett, would you like to address your motion? Just, just briefly, uh, leaving the library open an extra day is a true return on investment in the community. If anyone's looking for a return on investment, this really is the payoff of, of our public services comes from a program like this that serves every citizen in the in the city and has been one of the real embarrassments. I think next year I hope we look at Monday library hours and we get this thing open again seven days a week. Uh, it's really too bad to have it closed uh, and I, I hope we can start a trend. It's a very small amount of money to think serve a whole bunch of people so I hope you'll approve it. Okay, any other discussion? Member Lewis. Well, there is that little library in West Salem that, but I'm willing to uh, go along with this as long as it works out and we can be sitting here next year talking about adding a little bit of time to the West Salem Library also. Okay, all those in favor of the motion to add $20,000 to the general fund to extend Sunday hours at the library, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, we have a couple more wish list items to deal with. Uh, yes, th that includes it. Member Lewis. Yeah, I'm, I think there's just one left. I'm going to move that we, I'll put it this way, hold off adding the one police officer position for the downtown team until next year, the 2016-17 budget. Second. Right, would you like to address your motion? Two, two reasons for that. One, um, this was the talk around this was mostly in conjunction with the opening of the Minto Island Bridge, which is my understanding won't open until um, 2016 or after. And secondly, um, I have a great deal of respect for Chief Moore and how he prepares his, uh, his staff. And um, uh, I assume that there is training going on um, all the time. And so, the next uh, bicycle patrol person is probably probably already lined up and ready to go. Um, and so I don't think there's a need for us to hire somebody a year out for that position um, is the additional police officer. But that police officer is not necessarily going to be the person that's going to be on duty um, downtown. And so um, I don't think we need to hire somebody for this position a year ahead of time. I think that person could already be identified in the existing staff. So the need won't be for a year from now. The expense, I don't think, is needed this year. <coughs> okay, Member Bennett. Uh, thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'll support the motion. Um, and the reason I will, I guess, uh, is um, 
not because we don't need more than four people on bicycles downtown, uh, which is uh, at least two, if not three, and when we open that bridge, four, possibly five understaffed. I, that is gonna be such a change, and so I think your timing is a really good point. Four is not enough. We do not have police coverage downtown uh, at, at times of day that is adequate, I think. This is my word. I hear about the problems that occur. I've, I've talked with folks from that unit. The unit just seems to get cut. But what really pushes me is that we have eight unfilled police positions. And I would like to see at least one of those. I hope we get all eight filled this year. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing positions. I know it's a strategy and I, I understand it, but it's a strategy often to leave positions unfilled to save money. And we've seen it, you see it in state government, it's just bigger by the thousands. You'll float these, these ghost, ghost positions through. But I don't think we can afford to do that. I, I think we need to at some point come clean on how badly we need police officers in this town and the unit that I constantly look at is that downtown unit. So I'm hoping the city manager uh, will work with the chief and you'll be able to bring <clears throat> at least a couple of these positions online during this year. I think the floating eight that we hear about every year, uh, it, it, we need to start closing that up. So we don't need to add now nine. I think that's what that officer would represent at this point. So. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we can take care of it within the existing budget by uh, working on the priorities. I, I just hope the priority, that's my opinion, I'm sure others have different, but mine is that it be added to that bicycle patrol downtown. Member Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering if Chief Moore could address the uh, training issue that we've discussed because at one point when we first brought this up, I thought part of the idea was it would take the year this fiscal year to get somebody ready on the bike patrol downtown extended into Middle Brown Park. And if that's not the case, well, that's good. But I, I, I'm interested in what the chief has to say about this, as well as the also the uh, floating eight and the eight unfilled positions and whether or not um, some other positions at some point could be allocated into the downtown Mental, Bark, Mental Brown Park situation. Thank you, Councillor. Um, well, you, what I spoke about on, uh, on during my budget, bu budget presentation uh, is still accurate. Uh, when we have open positions, it, it usually takes us uh, about eight, eight months to a year to hire someone and, and get them on the road uh, in, a, in a solo capacity. Addressing the bike officers, uh, I, I can't remember who said it, but you're uh, you're very close to the truth. It doesn't take us long to take a seasoned, tenured officer uh, and put, to train them to, to be on the bike team, and, and that's the easy part. The hard part is when you take them from patrol and put them on the bike team, you now have a vacancy in patrol. So I think uh, what we will be doing in the, well, I'll, I'll back up. If, if we're uh, fully, stra fully staffed and everyone's trained, uh, I think we're in pretty good, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, I, I will tell you, even when we are fully staffed, uh, we will have uh, people out on injuries and things like that, but that's just the cost of doing business and what we do, and, and we'll deal with that. Uh, I think um, when it does come time uh, for the bridge uh, to open and, uh, and for us to take on additional duties, I, I don't know the exact number. I think uh, you, may be, you may be close, uh, because what we're going to be doing is adding uh, uh, weekends, which we don't even cover at this point. So um, if we're fully staffed and those people are trained, um, I think we're in pretty good shape. And we have discussed internally our ability to perhaps uh, move some of the people that might be on patrol into, uh, into the bike team to try and help downtown. One follow-up question, Chief. Of the eight vacant positions, um, when might they come online as, uh, as actual officers? So where in the eight months to to uh, a year, are we on those? Uh, we, we are finalizing our uh, testing process right now. We are uh, setting up interviews for uh, the next month, hopefully. Uh, we believe we will hire um, in September. And, uh, and uh, we are also, during this uh, last uh, 
uh, testing process, we also looked for lateral officers, which uh, means they're fully trained people from another agency that we might be able to bring in, which reduces the amount of time that it takes for us to have them in training. They don't have to go to the academy in most cases, uh, so they hit the, uh, hit the road much sooner. Uh, but we anticipate uh, uh, hiring by September, and it would be our hope that uh, um, eight months later they'd be able to hit the road, which would be around July or maybe a little later. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I will call for the question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. nay. Motion carries. All right, then I have a motion. I move that we take the, that we move the $75,000 wish list item for a strategic communications plan to be created and add it to the budget. Second. So there, we discussed this quite at length earlier, so I don't know if there's any more discussion about it. Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, will the nays raise your hand, please? Right. Motion carries. Okay, let me get my place on the agenda back here. All right. Yes, Ms. Jacobs. Thank you. If you could just indulge me for a moment with the wish list. So we have $20,000 for extending Sunday hours, and we have $75,000 for a strategic communications plan. So do we have um, an idea of where we want the funding for those things to come from? I mean, we have some options on the report where that funding can come from. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Member Bennett. I move we uh, uh, fund them uh, with a reduction in the ending fund balance. Second. Would, would you like to address that and then Mayor Peterson? No, it's like? pretty selfish. Okay, Mayor Peterson. Okay, so I have a, a question for a city manager. If we have just eliminated the um, one police officer position from the list, is that my understanding? Mm -hmm. We just did that. So then that means that the uh, proposal by the city manager for uh, funding um, the wish list items <coughs> Would that change then from your suggestion about how to fund that general fund list? If now the general fund list is the additional hours for the library and the, did we remove the, we did remove the graffiti mm -hmm. yes. position. Yes. So that's off and the police officer position is off. So then we're left with the 20,000 and the, was it 75,000? 75,000 is a one-time. Right. And you eliminated the, the 6,200 for the batteries and decided not to do the 1,200 for at least this year. So if, if you're asking if, if that changes um, a recommendation. Yes. Um, I, uh, I listened carefully and intently as we went through the last week with uh, everyone looking at each page of the budget and afterward I went, sorry. I, won't stay on here. Uh, so I, I went back and, and scoured through all the pages, asked some questions. I did hear comments from, from some members uh, uh, or some questioning of whether all the ending fund balances were appropriate. Went back and asked several questions. Um, and I did talk to our HR manager, was able to come across an actuarial study. Uh, we are self-insured and, and self-insured in the liability fund. And uh, the amount we have in reserve is over the amount that they recommended us for, for us to have a conservative amount to, to meet any potential claims um, against the city. So um, if I were to recommend, rather than coming out of the, the fund balance, I would recommend reducing the liability insurance charge from the general fund by 95,000. Okay. I'll, uh, and I'll accept, I, I'll, I'll just change my motion to that. Uh -huh. That's yeah. what I was looking for, is where do you, where do you want it? Then the second part of my question is, then can we remove from consideration the um, information technology special projects of 14,950? And can we remove from consideration the uh, general fund non-departmental 
of 10,000 for um, software purchasing. Yes, can, we can. So those two items then will remain in the budget. That is correct. Good, good, okay. Member Happy Anderson, then Member Nanke. So under your proposal, which I agree with Councillor Bennett that that's where it ought to come from, we're still going to be um, 15,000 over the, the, the yeah. conservative yeah. reserve that uh, we've got already. So that's correct, still and, and we'll reassess that as well next year. If we're still over, then we'll decrease the amount of the rates that go into that fund got annually. It, got it. So, so that's, that's the appropriate place for it to come from, I would say. Okay. Unless Officer Jacobs has a correction for it. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted to, and I know there needs to be more discussion, but I just wanted to, to have it added in the motion, if I could please, that the reductions that to the general insurance, the liability insurance premiums that are at the bottom of the second page of the wish list report, that's actually, that needs to be an action. I need to make re expenditure reductions in each of those budgets. So what the motion would be to make proportionate reductions based upon the level of funding that we need, that $95,000, then we'll make proportionate reductions to all of those line items that you see there at the bottom of the page. I need that as part of the motion so that I can make those reductions, those changes to the budgets. Uh, I, I would okay, add that so, also to the motion. So um, I have um, Member Nanke, and then after he speaks, Member Bennett, would you be prepared to restate your motion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and my point was only if there's an extra piece of funds there that we're suggesting reducing that, it, would there be an appropriate place to send it inside of the motion as well, or do we just leave it there and deal with it later? I, I would suggest Next leaving year. it there, okay. and then it will accumulate in fund balance the following year, and we'll make adjustments accordingly. Member Anderson. I'm sorry, I have a question because I thought that the, uh, we're now talking about the general fund and you look at table one of the liability insurance premium, premium, 110 is from the general fund and all the others are from different funds that get it to the 191. So why would you proportionately reduce all the other funds? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let the record reflect that Kelly Jacobs pointed at Mina Hansen. <laughs> uh, Mina Hansen, HR Director. Um, Councillor Anderson and uh, Budget Committee, we, uh, when we are allocating insurance funds, we have to apply our methodology equally. We have dedicated funds. If we just lower the general fund, then our dedicated fund sources could cry foul because the reserves are collected from all fund sources okay. over time. Thank you very much. That makes it perfectly understandable. All right. Thank you. Um, Member Bennett. Yes. I'm just looking for the, I made myself a note that kind of explained how to do this. Uh, I, me I uh, move reducing the liability insurance charge for the general fund by $95,000 proportionately allocated uh, to liability premiums paid by various departments. Second. Okay. So is there any other discussion? I will call for the question. <coughs> okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion passes. Okay, at this time we will move on to the public hearing for our budget. So we're on item six on your agenda. Do we have a staff report? Or Actually, we do not. This is just simply an opportunity if members of the public want to speak to items on the agenda or about the budget. I see. I have no one signed up to speak, and I don't know if there's any members of the public here. So we will move along. So we are now on item seven to approve the 2015-16 City of Salem ad valorem property taxes. Do we have a staff report for that? We do, and it is item seven in your agenda packet. And as I mentioned earlier, there's two parts to this. It's approving the permanent tax rate of 5.8315 per thousand for the general fund operations and then also approving the general obligation bond debt levy of $11,447,500. And I just, just as a reminder, the city um, on the 
general um, operations tax levy, we levy to the max. It's our permanent rate. This is the maximum that we can levy. Okay, is there any discussion on that? If not, I will need a motion. A member Nanke. And we've talked about this item uh, at the state capitol as well. And Eugene, which is of comparative size to us, um, actually gets $7 per thousand. And we wonder why we struggle with our budget every year. It's because of where they just haphazardly froze your uh, tax base um, back when we were having fun with property taxes. So two cities identical. We have the added benefit of having 32% of our tax or properties not on the tax rolls at all as well, which uh, I don't know what Eugene's number is, but it's not that high. Right, I need a motion. Uh, Member Bailey. Move approval of the, the uh, City of Salem permanent tax rate of $5.8315 for general fund operations and the general obligation bond levy of $11,447,500. Second. Okay, moved by Member Bailey, seconded by Member Berger. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, we are now on to item eight to recommend the 2015-16 Salem budget. So first, if we have any other discussion than ha what we've already talked about tonight. Anything? Okay. Then if not, seeing that, um, I will need a motion to approve or recommendation. Member Bailey. J just a question first. What's what? I don't recall, what is the specific language that you need? I mean, I can say I, I, I move to approve the budget, but do you need the dollar figure? No. Okay, then I move that we approve the, the uh, FY 2015-2016 uh, City of Salem budget as discussed and amended and approved in, as we've gone along here within the budget committee. Second. Okay, moved by Member Bailey, seconded by Member Benars. Any discussion? Okay, all of those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Okay, we are now on item nine and I think we have a staff report for that. Yes, thank you. And item nine is the approval of the Ad Valerum property taxes for the Salem Urban Renewal Agency. This is set out a little differently than the previous report because we're approving the division of taxes and um, for all of the urban renewal, active urban renewal areas, plus the special levy for the riverfront downtown urban renewal area. The total there is $11,831,490. Okay, is there any discussion? Member McCoy. Thank you. I just have a question. Why does uh, under Riverfront Downtown under Special Levy it says remainder instead of a dollar amount? I mean. Well, um, I mean, and as you look at the second page of that report, we actually do have a dollar amount on the second page of that report. So basically, the Special okay. Levy makes makes Riverfront Downtown whole. It's the only of our urban renewal agencies right now that where we can apply for the Special Levy. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will entertain a motion to approve the special levy or the, the ad valorem property tax levies. Member Anderson. I move that we approve the fiscal year 2015-16 Salem Urban Renewal Agency ad valorem property taxes. Second. Okay, moved by Member Anderson, seconded by Member Benars. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, we are now on to item 10 to recommend the 2015-16 Urban Renewal Agency budget. Is there any discussion? And if not, I will entertain a motion. Member Benars. I uh, move that we approve the 2015-16 Salem Urban Renewal Agency budget. Second. 
Okay, moved by Member Benar, seconded by Member Nanke. Any discussion? Not always a second. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. And just before we adjourn, I do want to take a moment again to thank you so much for um, all of your time you've put in, especially to our citizen budget committee members, um, that you, you stuck it out. And we had some really great discussions. And I really, really appreciate the time and attention that you give to our budget. We couldn't do it without you. And so I'm um, very much appreciated. And also to all of the staff that I know spend months and months and months um, working on this and then come and have to explain what you know their rationale for what they're recommending. So I appreciate that. Um, Member Bailey. Yes, thank you. Um, as a citizen member, I, I, I must be a masochist, but I, I enjoy this, this kind of meeting. <laughs> I do. It's, it's, uh, it's the way our communities ought to run. And I especially appreciate the discussions that we've had and sort of the level of civility and intelligence, the right questions got asked, I thought, good discussions. But I especially want to thank the staff. I mean, this is sort of the payoff. And I've been in the staff position for all my career. I was the guy that stayed up late putting the, you know, collating documents and sending them out and then doing the follow-up on Sunday morning, uh, trying to get it out for Monday's mailing. So I really appreciate the, the very professional work that's been done to bring us to this point. And it makes it easy for us to come in and sit down and go through this stuff. And so everybody from, you know, the police department through public works and parks and the accounting staff and the budget staff that I, I, I really think Salem's in good hands, and I would say that, and I have said it to members of the public, that I think the city operation is, is really good, and it's uh, a pleasure to work with everybody here, and I'm, I'm proud of the work we do. Okay, thank you. Member McCoy. I'd like to echo that, and, um, you know, I'm a... <laughs> I'm like uh, Member Bailey. I'm a sort of a geek on this stuff. I actually enjoy this, uh, uh, <laughs> figuring out how it works and how everything goes together. But I got to say, I'm in awe of the specificity that's in this budget for us to look at. You can't. There's nothing. It's completely transparent. It's all there for you to see or anybody to see that wants to see it. Um, and I'm so impressed with the staff and the uh, um, how they have. Uh, captured and know what's in this document when we ask a question we get an answer and it's an accurate answer and it's it's the correct answer and when you look at the sheer volume of information in here that's just an awesome thing to have and it certainly makes me rest easier at night knowing that folks that we've got here uh, managing the budget and the 552 million dollars are doing so watching every penny just like it was their own so well done to the whole staff and thank you for the for the committee for the input and the rep you know uh, the, the exchange of ideas that we had, I think it was great and healthy for the city. Member Benares. I too want to echo and take that one step further to thank specifically uh, our interim city manager, Casey Duncan, going through his first solo trip of the budget is no easy task and the presentations and the stuff that you have to go through. Uh, I can see this well why we were paying so much money for a city manager at this point because of all the work that has to go through. Uh, I also want to make a comment that, that at the same time, I, I've been on the budget committee, this is my third year of doing this, and uh, it's gone smoother in many ways than past years, especially when it has come to the wish list, which we've come up with every year. And, uh, you know, out of a budget total of $500 million, 110 of it, which is general, uh, you know, we're only talking, nine, was that 95,000-ish dollars in the total shifting that, that we did within, within our work proposed a couple hundred thousand dollars, but the point was is that you were able to find places that you could actually fund. I remember other times we've had a wish list and we, we wanted police officers and we didn't get it. And I know this is a different time, the economy's coming back and everything, but, but uh, you know, which wasn't true before, but um, really appreciate you taking the time to find the money to do some of the things. And I appreciate working with the different individuals in this, in this room. We've had different opinions about things and, and uh, we go on. Uh, one small comment, as long as I have the mic. Um, I remember this. I like the layout of the budget. We had this, talked about this last year and then the year before. Uh, we have the difference, which was added. We have columns, so we had historical approach to it. We have the difference at the end. The only thing I wish we would have added is a percent change. Um, we didn't, I think it was one of the things that we talked about, but it just, it helps. It's one of the things that we were saying. We don't always look at the numbers, but we look at how much things are changing. Why is there a difference? Um, you know, and this year we didn't have as much of the shifting of 
the, the, the library is now underneath the city manager and the, the park division is over here. And we had some shifting, so it was really difficult to, to track the last couple of years, but we really didn't have that this year to, to worry about. So it was much clearer for us to take a look through. Thank you. Mayor Peterson. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to say thank you to all of the members of the committee. This is my fifth year, and this has been the most solid budget committee I have ever seen. A attendance has been terrific by the counselors, by the members. We've only had one who wasn't able to ever come. Uh, so, but I really appreciate the citizen members because it is an extra load for you that's in addition to your regular busy lives. We know this is gonna happen every year, those of us on council, but we really appreciate your time. And I wanna say a very heartfelt thank you to Diana Dickey, who, Councillor Dickey, I think has done an excellent job of guiding us through even some nights that were getting kind of long and everybody was getting maybe a little testy and everything, you just kept us on point and uh, in, a, in a lovely manner and congratulations for the way you have chaired this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, on that note, we have no other business, so we are adjourned. Woo -hoo -hoo!